Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. For people who grew up with little money, what always felt like a luxury. I am from a small island in the Pacific. While I mostly still take cold showers, I have always felt that a hot shower is the finest luxury one can experience. I had my first hot shower when I was 22 years old and I can never forget it. This is the kind of luxury I think people take for granted, I always avoided showers in the winter as a kid since most of the time they wear cold showers and the temperature here was around 12 degrees Celsius degree during those times. For sure. I've never been without heated water, but I kind of annoy my wife in the winter when we shower because every time we go in I make a comment about how amazing it is to be able to just turn a knob and have hot water coming out of pipes. I mean having clean, running water at all is a miracle in and of itself but taking a hot shower whenever I want is something not even the richest people of yesteryear could get. Going out for pizza was a big deal. Those free mini pizzas for reading books were huge. Three cheers for the book IT program. Yes. Did it for the free pizza. Kept doing it because I grew to actually enjoy reading. A meal out in a restaurant, not even a fancy one. McDonald's. I knew we were living well when my parents took me through the drive through No happy meals though. It's cheaper to get a hamburger and fries. You have toys at home. Happy meals were a birthday treat for me. Mom didn't get herself anything. Told me she wasn't hungry. I didn't understand until I was older. Grew up poor and when I was a kid I used to think you were rich if you had a dishwasher and a millionaire if you had one of those refrigerators that have a button for ice. McDonald's was also a luxury, a couple times a year on our birthdays. My husband also says this about refrigerator ice. We moved to a house with a nice dispensing refrigerator and he said I feel rich now. My uncle renovated his kitchen recently and had a nice dispensing fridge put in. Because it's fancy and rich like on American TV. Summer camp, or basically any school trips that had to be paid for. At my school the kids who couldn't afford to go on trips that happened during school hours still had to come to the school, we just sat in a room and did extra work like it was detention. I was lucky. If you taught at the day camp your kid could go for free. That was just day camp though not sleepaway camp. My mom found a camp teacher who had no kids of his own and he signed me up as his kid so I could get free day camp. Did that all through elementary school. What a wonderful man that he signed you up. My school district put in place a policy that any school trips, teams included, must take all members even if they cannot pay. So to pay for class trips we'd do fundraising activities. It was a lifesaver, because without that policy I probably wouldn't have gone. I work in a low-income district and we do this too. Sometimes we'll have teachers, staff, or families sponsor students for big things. We also have a discretionary fund and an internal list of exempt students who don't have an obligation to pay anything at all. Kids on that list don't even have to ask, we just pay for them. This way the kids don't even know who is on that list, it reduces stigma. A certain percentage of our students are without homes as well so we have showers, a washer forward slash dryer for clothes, and take home essential bags with toiletries and other things. Any student at any time can use these services, no questions asked. I sponsor a few girls each year for prom. I pay to get their nails, hair, and makeup done. Edit to those looking to help, I am in Massachusetts. We get state funding and we get paid whole bundles of money, no, really. Swear to God, this is the highest paying job I've ever had. If you're looking to make a difference in someone's life, find a low-income school in your area. Education department funding is all information that's open to the public. Almost every school has a fundraising page. If they don't, email the vice principal and say you'd like to donate and ask what their process is. If you email the principal, chances are you won't hear back, unless you're looking to donate a butt ton of money. You are all very kind and generous human beings and I love and appreciate the hell out of all of you guys. If you're feeling a warm forward slash fuzzy vibe right now, pass it on in your own way. Whether that's telling an 8-year-old that you like his sneakers or just not yelling at the teens playing their music a little too loud this summer. Do you, pass on the vibes, every good act is good. That's a good policy. One of the worst things about being the poor kid is that it's not like you can pay your own way even if you want to, it's literally illegal for you to have a job yet people still shame you like you did something wrong. Or you didn't tell your parents about the trip so they wouldn't feel guilty for telling you number. 
This hurts my childhood soul, but it's so painfully accurate. The older I got, the more I knew and the less I asked until I stopped altogether. After growing up in a home where every unexpected problem was a financial emergency, my idea of wealthy became I just want enough money that if something breaks I don't get anxiety about how to deal with it. I feel this one. Whenever something I own breaks down it leads to me having an absolute meltdown. Replacing stuff can be expensive as hell. As an adult, the first time that I had my car break down and I didn't have anxiety over whether I could fix it or replace it because I'd had a stable income with savings for exactly this sort of situation felt amazing. I feel this. I actually have a nice small savings account now, but in my head it's don't touch money and so I still freak out when anything breaks. I have to remind myself that savings are for spending on necessities. Having the heating on. We used to go to bed in our sleeping bags in winter which was really cool back then, pretty depressing now. Agree with this. The first winter after my parents divorced we visited my dad in NY, where I grew up. After the divorce, he couldn't afford to have the heat on, so we always put on two pairs of socks, an extra sweater, and extra blankets. I was 15, so I knew it was abnormal, but I helped him make it seem cool to my younger sisters. Despite that, still one of the best times I've had with him. During that winter he repeatedly encouraged me to keep up my painting and always told me they were great, even if they weren't. It's the reason I'm still painting 11 years from then. ETA, I had no idea this would get so much attention. He's probably napping right now, fuck Parkinson's but I did send him screenshots of multiple comments from you guys and will update again when he responds. I just ordered him a cat tree and a divacher, no idea what it does, just know that he wants one for his good days where he can do yard work. I am currently in the matching definite leopard t-shirts we have, the Hysteria album cover, which he let me have in addition to his box of records. I feel so much love from all of you guys at this present moment, and even more from him the more you guys are having me talk about this. Second edit, I sent him a screenshot and he replied. What did you say? Yes, with that many question marks. I said it didn't matter, but that a ton of people thought he was cool and a good dad. All he said back was you're killing me, smalls and good to know. D. Oh absolutely, I don't think I could ever forget the feeling of when we'd wake up at 5am freezing and trying to keep as much warmth under the blanket as possible. That inability to get out of bed because it was warm. I remember that one really well. It's kind of a comforting feeling in some ways now though. Getting new clothes at Christmas from relatives. I don't know if that is exactly a luxury or the kind of answer you are looking for, but we never had a lot of money when I was in middle school. I went an entire year wearing the same pants every day. The funny thing was my parents didn't even buy them for me. I got them for Christmas from my grandparents. All the kids used to give me so much shit for wearing the same pants every day. I always told them that I had five of the same pair which made me feel good inside and kind of made the me's off even though I know they didn't believe me. I remember I fell on the school bus one day and the jagged floor cut a hole right in the kneecap and the panic that went over me was just insane. It was one of the worst feelings of my whole life because I knew that I didn't have any other pants to wear and that now all of the kids in my school were going to know that I only had one pair. Needless to say I could not wait for the last month of school to end. When my paternal grandmother found out my brother, same mom, different dad, only had two pairs of pants that fit him for school that year she sent my mother money specifically to buy only him clothes. And when I'd spend my summers with my dad my grandmother would buy me and my brother new wardrobes for the school year, and plenty of school supplies for both of us, even though she had zero obligation to my brother. She refused to allow him to have no decent clothes for the school year, and she especially didn't want him to think he somehow deserved less than me just because his paternal family wouldn't do the same for him. She's been gone 15 years and he and I still talk about this. Edit, I can't get over how much love is pouring in over what my grandmother considered nothing more than doing the right thing. I thought I'd tell y'all another great story about my grandmother. So my grandmother hated my second stepfather, it's a long convoluted story but basically he was friends with my dad's brother growing up and while my parents were married he and my mom slept together. But he was really good to me so she tolerated him. Anyway, I was about 11 when my mom was pregnant with my youngest sibling. And I specifically remember my parents worrying about not being able to afford a new car seat. I came home from school one day and my mom was crying. Turned out to be happy tears because my grandmother, 
who hadn't been my mother's mother-in-law in over a decade and didn't have the nicest feelings towards her or my stepdad, had sent my mother a $500 check in a card with the stipulation that none of it was to be spent on my brother or I, only on the new baby. She was such a wonderful woman. I miss her all the time. That story made me smile and cry a bit. Ty for sharing it, it's nice hearing about such a good pure thing. Your grandmother was a rare and wonderful person. You are very lucky. I remember having two or three pairs of pants and having to strategically wear them so that people would think laundry day was Wednesday.